Hi boys, Sawtash Maths Tutor and uh, this video is going to be uh, I guess about 10 minutes long or so and it is for very much uh, those who are getting into stats, statistics and you're all pretty used to doing you know four squared and cos of an angle and stuff like that and suddenly you start getting this language of statistics and you may be feeling very much like this at the moment. Um, but it's really important that you get some of the basic fundamental concepts under your belt. And that's what this video is going to be about. Just some basic stuff um, which gets your mind right and the foundation of your knowledge right and then you can move on. So the first half is going to be uh, just hopefully ticking off a few things. I'm going to talk about what sample space is, I'm going to talk about collectively exhaustive, and I'm going to talk about mutually exclusive, and already you're probably going, oh, God. oh, oh, what a nightmare, but just want to go over these things and just get the definitions and, more importantly, some examples down for you. So, uh, firstly, sample space, and hopefully this is a fairly easy one for you. And the, the, the dice, everyone, are going to turn up quite a lot during this. But the sample space is all of the possible outcomes. So it's all, all of the possible, all of the possible outcomes. So what does that mean? Well, if it was um, a dice, what are the possible outcomes? Well, I could get one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, if I just happen to throw the dice three times and I've got a one, got another one, got a four, and got a five, those are my, yeah, these are my outcomes, but the possible outcomes could have been, on any of those throws, this group here. And that is the sample space. And we donate, 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 oh. old age people and too much coffee. Uh, we don't. <laughs> we denote the sample space as S. So you could say the su the sample space S of a die, which is the posh mathematical name everybody for what you and I call a dice, is one, two, three, four, five, and six. Those are the possible outcomes every time I throw the dice. Okay, so the next bit is uh, collectively um, exhaustive and the key word here is exhaustive because um, what, you know, if I exhaust something, if I exhaust the supply of coal within the United Kingdom or the mm. if I exhaust all the petrol, that means there's nothing left. And that's sort of the clue to the collectively exhaustive bit. So if I've got a sample space uh, and we're having the uh, dice again here, I unfortunately, friends, have difficulty calling it a die, but the die, uh, the sample space here is, uh, and you'll notice I put it in these sort of curvy brackets things, uh, is one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's any of the, any of the possible outcomes. Now let's just say um, I then actually throw the dice and first throw I get a 1 and the second throw I get a 4 just making this up as I go along then I get a 3 next throw I get a 2 then get a 6 then get a 5 um, well what I've done is this matches completely that and therefore I've exhausted used up all of the possible outcomes and therefore that is collectively exhaustive. So to put that more neatly, that would be outcomes that can be any of the sample space. So I'm just going to leave with that, that concept here because in a second we're going to look at what the difference between, we're going to make a, uh, a comparison between collectively exhaustive and uh, mutually exclusive, which is the next thing. So mutually exclusive is um, a little bit easier to understand, I guess. 
and what mutually exclusive means is that you've got a situation where you can either get an outcome or not. There can't be a sort of a mixture of things. If I'm throwing a coin, tossing a coin, then I can either get a head or I can get a tail. There isn't anything where I can get a bit of both. It's either a head or a tail. If I'm throwing a dice, then I can get uh, a one or a two, three, four, five or six, but there isn't a score which is five and a half on a dice, is there? And I can't get at the same time a four and a six. That's not how dice work. Each event is mutually exclusive. So that is that they are events that cannot happen at the same time. There you go. Now your brain may very well <laughs> be awash at the moment. Um, so uh, let's just do some comparisons between mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive and I think this might help just to absolutely firm up what the two are. So our old friend the uh, die turns up again and I've just written down what the um, sample space can be. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those are the the those are all of the possible outcomes. And the first thing I'm going to look at then is um, we just roll the dice, and uh, we'll we'll roll it six times, okay? And in that time, um, we will get just by how it has happened. We get one, two, three, a four, a five and a six. So I'm going to ask the question are these events mutually exclusive? Well yes they are because we've already said that I can't throw a two and a half and I can't write a four uh, can't throw something like a four and a half. So yep it is mutually exclusive that those are mutually ex exclusive events. And is it collectively exhaustive? Well, I can match one to one, two to two, three to three, on and onwards. So yes, it is collectively exhaustive as well. And you might be thinking, he hasn't told me anything new yet. Okay. So how about if I throw the dice twice and I just get a one and a six? Well... Are these mutually exclusive events? Well, there's only one. One has occurred, and there's only I've thrown the dice again. There's only one six come up. So yeah, that is mutually exclusive. How about collectively exhaustive? Well, I only threw a one and a six. How about the two, three, four, and five? So it is not collectively exhaustive. And here, hopefully, is the real clincher for you. I throw the dice, and every time I make throw the dice, I make um, an observation. I observe on the throw whether the number I get is an even number. And I also make an observation if it's not 6. So what does that mean, then? Well, even numbers are 2 are 4 and 6 and not 6 must mean 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and now I ask myself the question for this if you like double set of criteria is there mutual exclusivity between the event that it's an even number and the event not a 6 well, mutually exclusive means that the same thing can't happen at the same time, or uh, you can't have the same score through two events. But here we go, look. We've got two occurring both in the set of when I'm looking for E for numbers and the set of not six. And it also occurs 
because I get a 4 which is an even number and 4 which is not even. So in this particular instance, for the criteria of an even number and not 6, then it is not mutually exclusive. Now I ask myself the question with the even numbers and, in fact let me just write in and there, and not 6, have I used all of the numbers in the sample space? Well I've got 1, yeah 2's are there, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So this is collectively exhaustive. So three definitions of three things. Um, mutual exclusivity, um, collective exhaustivity, making that one up everybody, and sample space. Did I mention mutual exclusivity? Hey, even I'm getting confused about things. But those three ideas, everybody, um, hopefully that's given you a better inkling of um, how they work. This has been Saltash Maths Tutor. I hope that has been of any help. Uh, if you need any more help, then please post. Thank you.